Sun's a mixture of a bunch of salts, of which the predominant one is silica. And with the power of chemistry, we can rip apart the silicon dioxide molecule to synthesize a versatile metal which has many uses like LCD screens, electronics and much more. But first we have to purify the silica. So, to start, into a beaker I've added some beach sand. Next I've added some water. Then I've started adding hydrochloric acid to it. What's happening here is we are dissolving some of the impurities from the sand. Bubbles are formed here due to the formation of carbon dioxide, which most likely comes from carbonates, like for example calcium carbonate. I've left it for like 30 minutes and this is our acid washed sand. Then I've decanted all the water, washed it and finally I've put it on a hot plate. Now we're left with a much purer silica than before, however, this is still not enough. There's still a bunch of contaminants in the mixture, so I started adding a bunch of sodium hydroxide beads to it, which, it on itself, is a really strong base, and it will convert silica into a water-soluble form. The reason why I didn't dissolve the sodium hydroxide in water is because silica is such a resilient salt that neither aqueous bases or most acids can hurt it. So I've put it all into a pot and I started heating it on a campfire. I really suck at making campfires, so the whole thing barely wanted to burn. However, we can see some bubbling coming from the sun sodium hydroxide mix, which means the whole thing is working. What's happening here is that sodium hydroxide is reacting with the silicon dioxide to form sodium silicate. At first I didn't think the sodium hydroxide worked, however, after powdering the mix in a coffee grinder and then blasting it with a Bunsen burner, I've decided that the reaction came along pretty well. So I've just added a bunch of water to dissolve the silicate. After that I filtered everything and the worst had happened, which is the filter was getting clogged and I've had to constantly swap it out. Anyway, after 3 hours of psychological torture we were left with a bunch of orange solution, which <laughs> is definitely not pure. So anyway, here's the exciting part, which is the neutralization of all the excess base and turning sodium silicate into silic acid to purify and extract the silicon source. So anyway, I started adding a bunch of concentrated sulfuric acid into the solution. As I was adding it, the solution started getting really angry with me, because if you paid attention at school, bases and acids don't like each other, especially when they're one of the strongest ones you can have in an average lab. What's happening here is we're acidifying the solution to turn sodium silicate into silic acid. As we all know, the stronger acids bring out the weaker on out, and the sulfuric acid is the strongest acid in the world, it does the job really well. Silic acid is not soluble in water and it precipitates. The whole thing was filtered and here's me checking the purity of the silic acid. After touching it, I felt pretty silly, so I guess it must be really strong. <laughs> anyway, I've added a bunch of the silic acid onto a pan and started heating it. This is the part where it pissed me off. Silic acid decomposes into silicon dioxide at extremely high temperatures, which I've had trouble reaching. So eventually I've put it onto a campfire and I've tried the steel forging method to reach the temperature. But sadly, my pump decided to break itself for no reason and I was stuck with the only option of heating, which is blow torching. This process was extremely unpleasant, in fact I was blow touching it for so long that my phone which was recording the footage turned off because of the heat emanating from the blowtorch. So there was definitely some conversion, however I'm not very optimistic. Anyway, to extract the silicon from the mixture I decided to go the fermite route. One is extremely dangerous and spills a like hydrogen cyanide like gas in the air and the other one is pretty tame and pretty safe. Naturally I've did both of them, the first one is the silicon dioxide aluminum sulfur fermite and here's me mixing the reagents. This is also the one which spills the toxic gas, but more on that later. After putting all of the fermite mix onto the brick, I've questioned why I was doing this, and then I remembered, oh yeah, Athens money. Hey you, yeah you, Russian Blue is coming to Discord. You, you should, should join my Discord server now. now! So let's go! This fermite was pretty cool and it definitely surprised me quite a bit. However, I could already sense the stench of rotting eggs one second after ignition. That's because sulfur was used, which was added to help sustain the reaction. The sulfur reacts with aluminum to produce aluminum sulfide, which decomposes into hydrogen sulfide on contact with moisture and water, which is a gas almost as toxic as hydrogen cyanide with a stench of rotting eggs. So I've had to act fast. So I've picked up all the slug into a beaker and went to a secluded location in which I've added a bunch of hydrochloric acid. This put the hydrogen sulfide production into overdrive, which you can see by the bubbles produced. Sadly, to while processing, the whole mix turned into a white mess, which most likely was due to the silic acid impurity. There was a little bit of the black spot, which was silicon metal, but it was not worth it to try to recover it, so this batch was dismissed. This fermite yielded much better results, and that's the magnesium fermite. So this is just a mix of magnesium and silicon dioxide, and here we go! And holy shit, why did it go so well? Here's me adding the slug to a solution of hydrochloric acid, and it didn't immediately react to produce silane, which is a good thing. 
When silicon and magnesium react, it can lead to the production of magnesium silicide, which is a salt which on contact with acids produces silane, which ignites on contact with air. So anyway, I started to process this. I didn't really record most of it because I think that posting torture on the internet is wrong, but I've washed it with hydrochloric acid and it turns out that most of the slug turned into a white mess. And I've had to somehow recover the silicon. I've did that by doing a really bad pressure wash and what we're left with are some metallic bits which look and clank totally like silicon. And also, as the Wikipedia says, they're very brittle, they also do look alike to the Wikipedia version color-wise too. So, thanks for watching, subscribe!